I don't know if it's just me, but I sure feel like I play the same grooves over the same tunes in the same way over and over. And I get really sick of this, so that's why this week I decided I was going to try and record 50 grooves over the same loop to try and push my creativity and see what I could come up with. Coming up with 50 fresh ideas for, for grooves to play over the same loop can be kind of a tall order, so that's why it's a pretty good idea to, to have some sort of parameters that you're going to limit yourself with so that you have somewhere to start with. So what I initially was thinking of was, I'm just going to start on the hi-hat, use a kick and snare, and I'll see where that goes. And actually, at the very beginning, I was just thinking, I'm just going to play hi-hat, snare, I'm not even going to improvise with those two voices, I'm just going to move around the bass drum. And then once I started to feel like I was exhausting those uh, ideas, I started to, to branch out to, to other cymbals and stuff like that. You could try just saying, hey, I'm only going to play on the rims of the drums, and you could see what you're going to come up with with using just the rims of the drums. Maybe you're not used to doing something like that. Another really great thing to do is to stop telling yourself that there's a correct way to play anything. Try to challenge yourself and say, if I were to play this wrong, what would I do? And try doing that, see how it sounds, and you can mess around with all these ideas that you've been typically telling yourself are, are bad and, and see what you can make up with them. Because uh, often you can find really cool ideas by just playing those kind of bad ideas and, and seeing how it works. I recorded all these grooves in just one 25 minute session, so it's pretty short and it was uh, actually pretty intense because just by hitting record, it really put the pressure on. I was like, okay, I know I'm going to be putting this stuff uh, on the internet, so you know it's going to be up there, it's going to be up there for people to judge. So in that regard, it was actually pretty cool because it made me think on a higher level than I normally do. Normally when you practice, you just kind of, you know, like, okay, uh, 25 minutes, I'm just going to, you know, play around. Even if you tell yourself, I'm going to play 50 grooves, uh, but if you don't record yourself, it's, there's not the high stakes, so you don't take it as seriously. So actually, I'd really recommend, if you can, record yourself, if you do want to, try to put it online, and that will help you kind of take it to uh, another level. I've tried to organize most of the grooves in, in categories and things like that, so you can skim through them and you can just see more or less what I did. I didn't do anything too crazy, it was just one session. I was only using sticks. I didn't use any kind of effect symbols or anything like that. So I'd like to try it again where I limit more of what I'm doing. Maybe I'll do it only using brushes or only using mallets or something like that. Uh, but if you want, you can check out the rest of the grooves. Also, in case you missed it, I made a video on how to take four rhythms and create tons of different kinds of fills. So if that seems interesting to you, uh, you can check that out uh, right here. All right, so we're on groove number 13. I figured I would do a, kind of a reaction thing for my own playing so you can see what I think of the grooves that I'm playing at the moment. So here at this point, I'm doing some right hand eighth note grooves on the hi-hat and I'm just improvising between the kick, snare, and hi-hat a little bit. So I add in those kind of hi-hat barks to add some syncopation. Then I move back to playing sixteenths with both hands with the little four on the floor thing on the kick to give it kind of a, a dance feel, I guess. I don't know. Then here I started experimenting with using the snare drum more to get like a pseudo march sound. Found it a bit difficult to get it even because it's not a kind of groove that I play very often. So what's cool about experimenting with all these kinds of grooves is you find out what you should probably work on in, in the future as well. Here I move on to the toms, start experimenting with some melodic ideas and stuff like that. This is a bit more natural to play because there's quite a few songs that have kind of tom grooves like this in them. So this one, I actually had some, some issues playing this groove and just keeping it consistent because that ride cymbal, there's so much space going on and uh, often those slow grooves with a lot of space, those are hardest to, to really nail the groove. So here I was trying to just stop playing any kind of pulse with my right hand and stop having that kind of timekeeping aspect going to see what I could come up with. And I'm just orchestrating between the different parts of the drum trying to get away from, yeah, using the, the hi-hat or ride cymbal as a sort of crutch to, to lean on. So 
so I start integrating the snare in a sort of march thing, but hybrid with using the toms as well. Now I do the same idea, but now I applied it to the floor tom to get a different texture. Same idea, but now I'm doing it on the hi-hat while still integrating the toms. Managed to use some roll rudiments within a groove. And after a while, I just snap back to using some eighth notes on the hi hat because there's there's so much stuff you can do with just that. Thinking about all the open hi hat possibilities, all the different ways to syncopate your grooves with this snare. So this is an, another idea that I I played earlier. But I went back to it and I added some different snare syncopation in there. And here I was filling in the 16th notes with my right hand. This was pretty hard to, to get solid because it's just not a groove that I do very often at all. And to get those, uh, just a consistent groove between all your limbs when you're changing up what you're doing, I find is pretty tricky. So that's another thing that I'd like to. bass drum stuff it makes me think of uh, Mark Giuliano licks. He tends to play some grooves where he just does little bursts like that on the kick. At much, fa much faster tempos though. So here I start using this kind of left, right, right sticking. I use that quite a bit, especially when it gets into faster tempos. It's just easy to play those left, right, rights, so it can be uh, an easy way to change up your groove. But listening back to the recording, I found it actually pretty hard to, to get that your hands to be perfectly in time when you're doing something like that because you're not playing consistent eighths or sixteenth notes with either one of your hands. So here I got those snare hits on the Beats. Now I'm going into some like kind of 30 second note grooves with a bit sort of jungle drum and bass vibes going on, but it's still that left, right, right sticking. So I just kind of lean on that. Same idea, but now I'm just starting to open the hi hat a little bit, get a bit more noise, a bit more chaos. Starting to play around with some dynamics, stuff like that. Once I got sick of that, then I moved on to the ride cymbal more kind of classic drum and bass licks. I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. I don't really play this kind of music very much at all. I, at least I haven't since I was at UNT, uh, where I, I played kind of modern jazz that would have these kinds of grooves, but I haven't done that in, in years, so still done it. And here, I was thinking about catching the melody. So not thinking about a groove, just trying to catch that piano melody and orchestrate it on the cymbals and on the drums and trying to get that to come out in what I'm doing. Now I snap back to hi-hat drum and bass kind of stuff. Because again, there's so many different possibilities within that and I didn't feel like I could really exhaust that. All right, so here's like a sort of Chris Dave thing. It's that little drunk groove. I guess it's probably closest to quintuplets or something, but I'm not really thinking that. I'm just kind of thinking of like a stretched out shuffle. Here we start experimenting with playing on the rims of the snare and then rim shots and stuff like that to get some different textures. Uh, this was actually pretty hard to get uh, a take that I was happy with. Because uh, yeah, a lot of these grooves I repeat them for, I don't know, 4 to 16 bars or something. And I just kind of took the chunks that seemed to be the most relevant or that I was happiest with. So it's kind of like a tom groove, but now I'm not playing the toms at all. I'm just only playing the rims, just seeing how those kind of textures would sound. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It sounds, it sounds cool. Do some flams and stuff like that. Using 16th notes. And actually from working on this kind of stuff, already, like that I recorded this last week, 
and I'm starting to use it more in my playing, just thinking outside the box, not being so afraid to change things up. So I remember I saw one of my friends play this when I was like high school. He played a groove using a stick, and this is probably the first time I've done that since that, but I still think of him when, uh, when I do this kind of thing. That's another thing I'm pretty happy with, the moving it closer to the mic, I didn't expect it to make such a drastic difference, but it, it does create some depth in the volume, and changing subdivisions to make it feel like the time is stretching. So yeah, going into like 16th notes and triplets and stuff like that on the hi-hat hi -hat now to make it stretch and pull. So some kind of metric modulation stuff, implying, uh, what am I doing? Playing kind of groupings of twos and fours in triplets on the hi-hat. Some three second note stuff on the hi-hat. When I wrote this loop, this is actually the first kind of groove that I wrote with it on using a drum machine. Yeah, so I, I like these kinds of grooves. It's kind of a 6-8 thing, even though the piano melody is, uh, I guess it fits. But yeah, those kind of uh, triplet based grooves are not typically things that people snap to unless you've worked on them a lot. Because they're kind of awkward. Most of us work on 16th note based grooves and kind of straight rhythms most. So those are our more comfort zone. But actually, in the next video, I'm probably going to be doing some uh, halftime shuffle stuff because I'd like to get better on it. Alright, and that's it. Wow, you're still here? So, fun fact, I was actually holding my cat this whole time because she wouldn't leave me alone. Uh, there you go, that's the Easter egg for staying till the end of the video. Thanks a lot if you did actually uh, watch the clips. Uh, I'll see you next time.